hi guys welcome to my channel if you are new uh, hold on sorry sorry hi guys welcome to my channel if you are new welcome and thanks for stopping by today topic is how to immigrate from your native country to another country uh, some of the some of the uh, think I'm gonna share today is uh, my experience um, some checklist of the thing that I did to su to successfully move overseas okay first thing first how to achieve your dream of moving abroad and oh that's a tricky question and how can i say about that okay first of all you need to know why do you want to move you know you have to know your why for me it was different i was young i was exciting i was um, i was an adventurer i like to discover i'm always curious about what is out there it doesn't matter i knew i was young i knew i have uh, energy and i knew i was smart enough to figure my way out so before you leave your native country you have to make a list of the things that you need try to do some research about how you know first of all get yourself a passport whatever country you're interested in you know, when I when I start my adventure, I was pretty young, so I didn't start just buy a ticket, go to Europe or go to America because that's from from me that from Central Africa Republic is kind of hard to do that. Like the requirement that U.S. Embassy asked at that time, I couldn't provide it because I was not financially ready. I was not um, I was just not ready for that. So I start traveling in Africa. So I start first of all going inside my country, like little city here and there for me to discover the villages, how people live there, what they have to offer, how people my age, how will they live there, stuff like that. I was always curious and, and each time that I make those little travel, I always embrace it. You know, I was never scared that, oh my God, somebody's going to hurt me or anything like that. And fear is one of the things that you shouldn't, I mean, you should think about it, but don't make it because fear can become an handicap for you. If you always, oh, we heard that over there is too gentle, oh, we heard. If you always think of life like that, I think you're going to be disabled for the rest of your life you know you'll be mentally disabled you'll be so you will develop fear fear will grow inside you so fear was there but i never put it as a as like a my top of fear is there i acknowledge it but i'm not gonna let it stop me doing what i have to do so that's that so and figure do your research uh, figure out which country you want to go to start budgeting i mean start saving money if you don't have money you have zero money start do some little work you know when i was young i was staying in my parents house i don't have to pay any bills i don't have to pay food i don't have to do anything but whatever money i was getting for either a gift or either working i was just saving the money saving the money into my parents never kicked me out. I, I'm the one that decided to leave. So I save enough money. So I leave, I go to a country neighbor from my country that called Cameroon. And I went there and I, when I was there, I was very exciting, happy. It was another country from Africa, which is, was close, a little farther, but not really far. And there was a lot of different things. And I get to stay there. I get to love being there i was i see the difference that i have to my country and there and 
how the mentality of the people have thing i mean it's almost the same thing because we are neighboring country most like just brother and stuff so it's not a lot of different but i have a lot of experience you know living with them different people different type very nice people i meet a lot of nice people there and just that was it when you have that positive energy in you you attract positive people but when you have negative energy we fortunately we attract negative people around you so i'm not saying that everybody that go abroad you always gonna meet nice people i mean I don't know everybody's circumstances sometimes we put ourselves into situation to think or sometimes it's just bad luck but i just never have any bad experience i do have a little here and there pity pity stuff but not as like oh my god you know stuff like that so i seen cameroon for like three years and from cameroon i come to us um you know like all african like all young african when we hear europe western country america is is the whole package you know the tv sold it to us like you guys just don't know like in your brain it just you go into the perfection so this is what it is so you choose which perfection you want to to you see yourself into it and then yeah so i saw myself in us i just it was something here that attracted me you know when i see movie when i see the and i was you know i was there was a lot of american also that would go to my country that i approach them when i talk to them so i kind of kind of get to know the people how this sounds like so i kind of uh, oh that's how they think or that so i kind of feel like okay would you be comfortable living with people like that or stuff like that but that would just let's say a start you know so then i uh, you know like video when we watch rap music video basketball i'm into basketball so you know like when i would grow up growing up like basketball so lakers since africa so like yeah i want to come to la where is lakers magic johnson abdul jabbar i mean this is this is all is here that's what it was sold you know so um so i always wanted to go but at that time i didn't i mean i don't have any family here i don't know anybody here i just said whatever i have to do to get there i will get there i know my why and i'm just excited to go to that country i don't know anything about when i mean anything that mean i don't know i know a little i know enough but not as like i knew the place you know so i didn't have like really somebody to say oh well you know no i just here here and there and go to dictionary try to figure out their story about the country what is like how is like but it's still story you know and so i wanted to go experience this you know i really wanted to go and experience it so then i you know I'm, i make my list what i want and what i'm going for and why i'm there this is what i want to do and then so yeah so you get your passport i mean when i come to cameroon i have to look for residency it is different from cameroon because cameroon is a neighborhood country for my country so it's a little different you know i don't need a visa to go to cameroon but if i decided to reside there which is i did i have to have a resident card that i live there but it's easy for get it i mean it would just it cost me i think maybe two hundred dollars I guess then that was like what 14 years ago i don't know how much it is now yeah so then it is every two years i think yeah every two years i have to pay 200 us dollars and um so yes and from there i decided to come to us so and then you know i while i was living in um cameroon i was still going back and forth to my country i would say to cameroon i will go back home i will stay i will come back here and i will i just that was just me like a free bird that want to just you know fly around like that that i was young i mean either i do it now and i'll never be able to do it so
so uh anyway um so i was done with cameroon and i was like you know you know u.s is next so i go to ask all the questions about everybody that live in u.s and how is it when i was done with all the question in u.s research now i have to go to u.s embassy website i need to find out what are the requirements that i need for me to go to u.s and then i have to read all the requirements now i have to check myself are you be able to provide this you be able to provide that then i have to do all my checklist whatever thing that was missing i have to make sure then i have it either right now or either in a three months or whatever the case was i'll I make sure that i have everything they require me to do so then i know uh i think at that time i was 24 so a lot of people were telling me why well, you are too young i don't think they're gonna give you a visa and stuff like that blah 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 but the u.s embassy visa procedure i mean it's the most easiest things that i ever experienced by taking other people i took other people visa too but u.s visa was very easy for me i mean you just fill out the application whatever it require you just bring all the things they ask you to and then that's it and you're gonna have an interview with one person that's just gonna ask you question few questions that take only five minutes i mean if you provide everything they want you to and then you tell them why you're going over there and why and there is no reason if they feel like there is no reason for them not to give you the visa then they give you the visa you know so they give you the visa so coming leaving africa to come to us is not an easy thing it needs money a lot of money we don't we don't swing to come here we don't there is no way for us to fly we live in another continent which is very far so to buy to cameroon to la that's a 17 no 16 hour flight and i not count all the layovers and stuff like douala to paris is a six hour flight and when you arrive to paris you stay there for four hours and then you now paris to cal uh, to los angeles that's an 11 hour flight so you add that up that's a lot of money and that from somebody that come from africa when you arrive to a country that you don't know anybody when I'm, I know people in the U.S., but they were not in California. They were in Washington and New York. New York and Washington and all those states was not what was in my mind. I was looking for Lakers, California, Los Angeles was what I was sold. That, this is what was sold to me. It was not <laughs> Washington. So, but washington state was no washington not state washington dc was the place that i arrived first because i have a cousin there so i arrived there i stayed there for a few days i really didn't like it i was not impressed i, I was actually disappointed i was like wow this is not the u.s that it was sold to me that's not i i, I think i I'm, I'm not arriving yet so so then I, I decided to come to LA after a few days. When I arrived to LA, this is when I know that yes, LA is what I bought, not Washington. Anyway, to make long uh, story short, I stay in LA. So the type of visa that I have, it was a B, B1 or B, a B1, they put slash B2 visa. That's for people that come to visit. For my country from central africa republic when you ask for one month or two weeks you say i'm going on vacation for two weeks or one month they give you one year this is an agreement between central africa and u.s um u.s politicians that's the agreement some country like senegal i think for there is five years they give you don't have to go to the embassy all the time if you want to come to us that one years or that five years 
whatever agreement your country have with that country that's how they base themselves on that for my country they give us one year if you ask even you say oh i'm going for five days they're just gonna give you one year uh multiple entries and then yeah that's just it so now i did have that one year's visa and then um what else yes i have that one year visa so and then hey i was here to visit to see how it's going and so whatever happened then i see from here so then so i arrive and i love california when i come i fell in love with the weather it's kind of like in africa and stuff i was amazing by the beach you know i my country we don't have a beach so then i have i was beat in cameroon they do have it but in california it's a little different it's it's so big it's, it was humongous everything was just out of the proportion it was a new city for me and it was you know it was everything was different so i really fell in love with california but i couldn't afford california california was the california is still to today it's like more years pass by more it become more and more expensive but if you let that fear live in you then you won't be able to make it so when i'm here i'm here so then when you're here you try to meet people i mean i was very fortunate i was very blessed everybody that i met into my way was very nice was very helpful you know it start from the first person that i met i met a, a guy from age 80 that was speaking french just to let you guys i didn't even speak english i met this guy from Asia, and he, i was like hey you speak french and we will start speaking french at the hotel and then and he goes like, hey, there is a school next door, not far from where we stay. So I take you there, you take some classes. And then that same night, when I went to that school, I met, um, I met, uh, what do you call, I met my teacher. He told me, oh, there is some African people here that speak French. And then from that, I went, those African people that I met, when we see each other, it's like we knew each other for years. I don't even know they was from Mali. Some of them were from Senegal. I didn't like, we jump, oh, how are you? Like, like some lost cousins, I just find them. Oh, how are you? I said, I just been here, blah, blah, blah. We just start talking, you know, I was like, oh my God, I'm so relieved. I don't speak English. I was like, oh, it's okay, you get it, blah, blah, blah. So then they told me, oh, come to, see us tomorrow at the store we you know we are business owners and stuff like that yeah we love to come the next day i went to the store next thing you know i met all the bunch of african people that was there and then i met all of them next thing you know i got a job just like that <laughs> just like that i got a job like i said i was very i mean i i i, I think when you work around with positive energy it attracts positive people you know towards you so i was very lucky i find this my people here from senegal and yeah they see me they see me they see them they, they don't see me they see them like i was their little sister or their ne niece nephew or whatever the case was they just they felt like they approached me they tried telling me how the system work and stuff like that and there was this young guy from mali he was very he was i think three years younger than me very smart very very strong this boy helped me a lot like he put me he had me say sit down it's just like somebody tell you get a pen and paper now start writing it down this is what you need to do you need to adjust to your statue like i'm talking about my type of visa that i have I have that b1 b2 visa now he told me all the options that i have to do to change my status what do i have what i have to do to get to that point you need to change it as soon as before your one year is expired you need to change the status otherwise you're just gonna be legal here but you won't be able to work you won't be able to do nothing with it and then that one year visa doesn't mean i can stay here one year i have to stay here six months and then exit and then come back again so i couldn't i couldn't um 
I couldn't work. So that boy helping me tell me how I'm gonna do to um change my statue and everything and he told me go to classes read book i mean there is nobody that speak french here you're just gonna have to go ahead and so i just learned english day by day i got the job the next day hey i was just sat there hustling i was selling at the store i was at the counter and then they were teaching me how to do business how to open the store how i have to manage it i get taught all accounting management ordering something that some people will pay to get taught i got it for free you know and then when i was done with it the guy that i, I was work for him he told me you know what god has sent you to me i haven't seen my mother for the last seven years and she's very sick now that i train you can you please run my store while i have to go back to africa i was so panicked i said oh my god i just got here i don't even speak english yet she said chill relax don't worry you're gonna just be fine and guess what i was just fine he left he was able to go and see his mother and i will stay here with people all the people that i work with we handled the business how we were supposed to handle and then then he came back and that was it. I decided to open my, I decided to, I said, you know what? I should open my own. I was trained and for somehow I learned very quick and I become good at what I was doing. And I was like, I don't see myself doing anything there now. So then he helped me, you know, open up the business. I opened my own business. Oh, it was good. It was the most, that was, 2005-2006 it was one of the best years of my life <laughs> business was really good I was this is it was the first time I actually start getting money like when I mean money like money money now like you know just by selling you know thing like that like like African clothes Bob Marley's you know stuff like Jamaican stuff, scarf, like, you know, African clothes. It was really good. Really, really good. I was happy about that. I was so happy to be here, but it didn't last. <laughs> After that recession come in, everything went bad. I had to shut down my store, which was really sad. And now I have to retrain my brain have to adapt myself into different situation and stuff like that so when i did and i went to school i did some nursing and then yeah because nursing at that time was the only job that you cannot be unemployed at that time because everybody was losing their job i mean i lost my shop nobody was shopping nobody wasn't buying anything because everybody else lose their job at that year you have to either eat food or be homeless you, so you have to choose you're not gonna buy any clothes everybody it was depression it was the depression year you know the year of 2008 2009 it was really bad so i have to do some changing really quick those are the challenges that i have faces you know but anyway it passed by i was able to go to school got the job and go back and do nine to five just like everybody else to wait to you know how i can go back doing my business but even though what i was working i was still hustling aside i would go to my job and i would sell my co-worker some of the stuff that i was selling i sell purses african purses you know we just i was selling at my job and my co-worker was my customers and I would just keep doing me and I just never stop I'm into today this is what I do even when I'm traveling I'm still selling it just when you are born entrepreneur is in you it I mean it just it just it's just in you there's nothing nobody can do about it you cannot just do nine to five it just won't work nine to five it's is for it's like plan C or something but entrepreneur mind when you have it your brain is just going like that you always have to figure out what to do next and stuff so 
I knew what I want. I knew where I want to go. I knew why I want to go there. I knew how long I was going to stay there. But I just have to do my homework to know where I want to go, how I'm going to approach the, the situation. And yeah, so I was able to successfully change my status. And I was able to open a business. And I mean, I did it ups and downs, but you know, I was able to do all that because I wanted to be here for that time. And I was ready for the challenge. I never called my parents back home to say, oh my God, I need you guys to send me some money because I can't do it. I can't make it. I, I just, I, I was gone already. There was no turning back. I, I, I was gone. So I have to figure all that by myself. No turning back. So I have to each time embrace every challenge that I will face in my life. I always face it. And at the end of the day, some of them take me long time. Some of them take me short time. You know, it's just, it's just like life. It's just like heartbeat. Like if it goes, if the line goes straight, that means you are dead. If it's go up, it go down, it's go up, it's go down, that means you are still living, you know. No fear, you know, because uh, if fear, like I said, if fear is in you and live in you, it's going to be hard for you to maneuver. So now today that I'm talking to you guys, it's been 14 years that I've been here. So uh, my husband and I, we decided to... to uh, work i guess three or four more years and then we just retired i want to retire at 40. i'm 39 right now i don't want to work in my 40. i start very young i want to end up very young i don't want to be too old and i won't be able to not do nothing like spend my life in one spot no i want to go back home i have worked hard i save enough money for me to go back home and just live my comfortable life and keep flying around and keep visiting the world and especially i want to finish visiting all the country in africa i didn't get chance to finish all of them but i do visit some uh, i went to like i said cameroon i live there i went to kenya and then uh, i would love to go to nigeria i would love to go to um to um Ethiopia, those are those are the countries that is on my list right now, and Tanzania, and then Af I would love to visit East Africa. So, I after U.S. I guess that's the place I want to go, and then not just to go there to just visit for a few days. I actually want to get to stay there, live there for a minute, start doing business. I need to grow wealth from my future generation and then yeah that's that's my um that's my that's my life story uh, I, I don't know i hope it was not too long i hope it was not too boring but um i tried to wrap that up <laughs> i wrap, wrap that up as um as quick as i can so um what to get to that story is like uh Wanting to, you want to immigrate to another country, do your homework, be prepared financially. Don't just go because you know somebody there and somebody's going to wait for you at the airport. No, you always have to have some money in you in case where the person do not show up. You have at least 30 days for you to stay in a hotel before you change your mind or whatever the case is. You cannot travel in with few hundred dollars because you think your sister, your cousin, your friends is going to pick you up at the airport. No. A lot of bad things happen to people like that. They rely on their friends. It just turn out really bad. It just turn out really bad. So please, be prepared. Whether you know friends, whether you know family member, whether somebody tell you, we'll come, I'll be you, I'll be pick you up at the airport. Make sure you are ready financially. This is this is a, a this is not you cannot take that out of the list you have to go there try to figure out how much you need to live in that state or country whatever place you go to have a resource at least for 30 days if you know someone there 
but if you don't know anybody there you have to have at least three to four months you know like i mean your rent food transportation everything exploring all that you have to have it and then so if you like it and you feel like it's easy for you you see yourself here you can grow some of the idea whatever that will depend on you but come and visit first see what you can do come and put your feet into the water and then if that's where you want to be then you go from there if you don't like it then you don't see yourself here well then you have the chance to go back and do whatever you was doing before you come here or just move to the next country and just do as that so uh thank you for um stopping by um if it's your first time in this channel uh i appreciate by you stopping by thank you uh click the like button and subscribe i have a lot of other stories to talk about it and um thank you for stopping by and i'll see you in the next time